we wanted to kind of contemplate what giving in the 21st century looks like. And we have been focused on different facets of giving because there's no way for us to understand giving in the 21st century if we don't understand giving, period. So we've got to understand what giving is. And so we've been doing a, a review of biblical giving. And we're presently discussing the reality of the tithe. The tithe. Uh, the, the tithe is a normal way that many churches believe that giving should, be, should take place. And we've been refuting that over the last... Uh, four to five weeks. And so in light of that, I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Exodus 25. Exodus 25. I'm going to read those verses in a, in a moment for you. But before I do that, let's get, let's get some, some perspective. What we have seen so far in our weekly meditations is that the, 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 uh, the tithe was an obligatory tax that was required of each Israelite to maintain the government. It was not giving to the Lord because the people didn't own the tithe. It was a sacred portion whose ownership was the Lord's, not theirs. Therefore, withholding their tax money, withholding their tithe, was stealing and it violated the command of God himself. It wasn't a failure to love the Lord, it was a failure to obey the Lord. And just as by us not giving our tithes to our government, our taxes, we are disobedient to our government. Now, this is completely different from the free will giving in the Old Testament. When God talks about taxation, that's tithing, his focus was on obedience, but when he talks about giving, his focus is on loving the Lord. Let me blow this out for you just a little bit. Obligatory offerings were different than the free will offering. The free will type of offering was usually a type of given, giving given to God both prior to the law and during the law. It was different than the tithe. In the free will giving, the, the a person gave because of their heart. Their heart was moved, and so they would give to God out of their heart. Write down uh, Exodus 35, 1 through Exodus 36, 7. I want you to read those verses later. This is the first example of free will giving under the law. In fact, I'm going to say something this morning. Free will giving appears in the Bible during the time of the law before the law was even instituted. So before the law comes into place, Israel was already practicing free will giving. If you read Exodus 35, 1 through 36, 7, it's clear from this passage that the pattern of giving of the Lord was free will giving. When special offerings were needed for the sake of meeting a need within God's people, they were not to resort or to stoop to heavy-handed required giving. It was not required giving that demonstrated a person's love for God. That was taxation. Rather, it was a moved, stirred, and willing heart and spirit that led to the type of giving God embraced, which was free will giving. But not only was free will giving the pattern of giving to the Lord in special situations, within the law itself, God also incorporated free will giving. If you look at the sacrifices that God required of the children of Israel, one of the phases of sacrifices were sacrifices you gave freely, not because you necessarily sinned, but because you wanted to worship God out of your heart. And so there's a whole section of sacrifices in the Old Testament that are free will sacrifices. They come from the, from the believer's heart in giving thanks unto God. So two types of free will giving under the law. One is situational, one is sacrificial, that's regular, that takes place as part of the regular worship of Israel. Two types of free will giving in the Old Testament. We're going to look at both of these types, one this week and then one next week. The situational giving. That's Exodus 25. Let's look at these verses here this morning. And notice the language that Moses uses here. Verse 1. Then the Lord God spoke to Moses, saying, Tell the sons of Israel to raise a contribution for me. From every man whose heart moves him, you shall raise my contribution. And, thus, and this is the contribution which you are to raise from them, gold and silver and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet, fine linen, goat hair, 
Rams, skins, dyed red. Porpoise, skins, acacia wood. Oil for, for lighting, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. Onyx stones and setting stones for the ephod and for the breastplate. And let them construct a sanctuary for me that I may dwell among them according to all that I'm going to show you as the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furniture, just so you shall construct it. Now, later today, when you read Exodus 35, 1 through 36, 7, you're going to see the very same language used by Moses. This passage, verse chapter 25, sets it up. God tells them what he wants them to do. Chapter 36 and 37, they then do it. In obedience to God, they give a contribution from their hearts. Now, what you're going to see when you read these verses is that I have five principles. I want to just give you these principles quickly that come out of this text, and then we'll, we'll transition. As you read these verses, Exodus 25, Exodus 35, the first thing you see is that free, free will giving was, was, was to fill a need identified as as such by God, and communicated by a recognized leader to the people of God. In other words, free will giving is something that God himself communicates through a prescribed leader. There's somebody in the group, in, in the group Moses here, who receives from God the directive to, to push forward in the free will giving, and then the people respond in obedience. And you see that, of course, in Exodus 25 and Exodus 35. Number two. The basis of the giving of the free will offering was the heart and the spirit, which is described by the words willing and stirred and moved. When you see those words willing, stirred, and moved, what it's saying is God got a hold of your life. And you're giving to God because your heart is willing, it's been stirred by God, it's been moved by God, and because of that, you raise a contribution for God. Number three. People gave as they were prospered. As God prospered them, they gave. Let me ask you a question. God tells a group of people who've been slaves for 400 years to give gold and onyx stones and spices. Where did they get that stuff from? They've been slaves for 400 years. The, the Egyptians gave them those resources when they left, right? And so as they had been prospered, as God blessed them, well, what were they supposed to do? Give to God. It comes as God blesses his people, as God prospers his people, his people then in turn give back to God. It's the nature of free will giving. We also see here that as this, as this passage unfolds, that it refers to this giving as free will and as contribution. This is not a required giving. This is not, this is not the tithe, the tax in, in Israel. This is a free will contribution from the heart. And then finally, I want you to notice here that this attitude in this offering was not stinginess. This is, this, is, this is key. As you read Exodus 36 and 37, what you're going to find out is that the people gave bountifully. In fact, God had to say, stop giving. And just imagine if we came up here one Sunday and said, you know what? Stop giving. You all are just going off the, the, the charts. We can't take anymore. God had to shut it down. Why? Because free will giving by its very nature is generous. It wants to give. It wants to exceedingly give. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But one of the things that we need to understand is, I believe a lot of reasons that churches limit the giving to 10%, the tithe, is because people don't want to give more than 10%. And people want to feel comfortable in giving 10%. Now, some of us can give much more than 10%. You see, free will giving from a heart that's moved and stirred and drawn closer to God, that has been blessed by God, seeks to do three things. Give sacrificially, give generously, and give joyfully. This is the mark of true New Testament giving. 